Hi there. I'm Matt with K15T and we're going to talk about adding tables to our Confluence pages. Tables are really great when you start to write some text on a page and you realize, oh, I'm actually listing something. And then maybe you turn it into a bulleted list, but then you realize each bullet has multiple items. And so you're like, I need a way to lay out all this different content and see how it relates to each other. That is table time. So let's drop a table into our page. As always, you have a few different options for adding a table to your page. So right up in the menu bar, there is a button to add a table or you can use the handy keyboard shortcut. However you add it, you'll get a lovely three by three table with a header row. Now the header row is just highlighted in gray. It'll make the text bold just to help that row stand out if that's the way you're gonna list things out on your table. But you could also go into the table options and turn on a header column. That might be great if you're listing things in the other direction, or you might even turn on a numbered column. This is great for if you're listing things sequentially because you have a number that is automatically added in that cell every time you add a new row to the table. So let's say I wanna add a row to my table. You guessed it, I can do that in a few different ways. So I could, bring my cursor over to the left hand side of the table and use this handy insert row button to put a new row exactly where I want it. There's also a keyboard shortcut for this. I could also jump up to the column area and use the insert column button to add a column there. And then maybe I'm like, I don't really want a particular column or a row. I can click this little bar at the top of the column and use the remove column button, or I can hit the bar to the left of a row and hit the remove row button. So very quickly, you can build out your table or remove things from your table so you can get it to be just exactly the way you want it. If you click one or more cells, you have specific cell options. So for example, you could change the background color of one or more cells. This can be good if you want to call out particular information information. You also have the option to insert a column to the right of that cell or a row below that cell. So there's just another way of inserting. You can also remove the column or the row that the cell is in. And it's cool. It actually highlights what you're going to delete. And if you select multiple cells, you have a few other options. So for example, if you've selected two cells, you can merge them together, which is great for if you want to have cool combined views in your cells. And the nice thing is it doesn't lose any of the text that you had in the two cells. You can also select that merge cell and and select split cell and it will split it back into two individual cells in the table. There may also be situations where you've added a bunch of stuff to tables and one of your columns got way bigger than the other and you're just like, Ugh, it's not quite balanced. I want all the information to fit nicely within the table. You can do that too. If you select multiple cells and use the distribute columns button, it just evens them out and distributes the content really nicely. One other thing to know is I only have text in my table here, but you can add anything. So you could add images, you can add simple elements like maybe a status element or a date, or you could add a really complex macro. Just keep in mind that if it's a really big one, it might make your table very hard to read. So try to stick with those macros and elements that are small enough that they fit really well in a table and people can skim right through them. And if you're adding content to your table and you find that it's all starting to look a little squished, you can actually make your table wider than the width of the page that it's on. So on the right hand side, you can use this go wide button to go a little bit wider, or you can use the go full width button to cover the entire space of the page with your table. This is great for really information dense tables. So now that you have your new table on your Confluence page and it's full of information and you've got it looking pretty great, you might think that you're done, but just just because you can add a table to a page doesn't mean it's highly effective. So you might want to check out our other video full of table best practices to see how to highlight the most important information so people can find it in your table. So well done. We've created the first of many tables you will create in Confluence. It's looking good. But this is just adding tables in pages. There is so much more you can do in Confluence. So jump into another video in this course as we continue to explore using the Confluence editor to share what you do best.